So, good evening. We are looking forward tonight to begin a brand new chapter, which is paid in the seventh chapter of Yigedes HaTshuva. To see the previous classes, particularly this last two, two or three chapters, which are a clear sequence. Of course, we mentioned the Al Altarebbe's um, writings, everything, the precision and the sequence of all his writings in general, and starting from in the magnum opus, the Tanya, Lukuti Amorim, Shaykh Lamuna, Geras Hatshuva, all the Altarebbe's writing, the organization of Altarebbe's writing is <laughs> extraordinary, uh, as known, as known, but within sometimes you see um, within every segment different uh, prokim, which are clearly uh, connected, the continuum of these ch- these chapters, the clear connection of that particular segment, the sequence of Pedic after Pedic after Pedic, it's famously in the, the first thing you get is in Shari Lukuti uh, Amorim, and then in other in other segments as well. Generally throughout this get us a chuba, definitely from Pedic Dalid, a Dalid, and on for that matter, if you really will Dalid and on. Uh, there's clearly a very precise sequence over here. We're holding Pedic Zion, that is. So the Dalid, Hey, and Vov, to see this, uh, you see the, clearly the Altarebbe begins. Pedic Dalid, even though the first chapters, of course, are connected in our introduction to Pedic Dalid, understandably so. Um, but um, to understand these Prok and this Pedic Zion, one has to have that at least minimal clarity in Dalit Hei Vov um, as they're directly connected and as we come from the latter chapter, this last uh, Pedig Vov, um, which definitely leads in to Pedig Pedig Zion as a clear follow-up of the very um, last chapter, Pedig Vov, the sixth chapter. I do add, though, to have even maximum clarity in the, this entire subject, uh, Dalit Hei Vov, all three, are pretty crucial to understand it, uh, at least with m- with more much with uh, more clarity, and ultimately to understand this Pedig Zayin Ve'ulam that Emes Va'Yosha as Dal Tereb begins, that um, you know clearly with terminologies of these last three chapters, accordingly. So we're going to begin Pedig Zayin to see the last all the classes, but that matter all the Shari from Shaykh Vemuna from the very first segment. We merited to conclude, we mentioned quite a few times. Shari Chavemun also, we merited to conclude, and we're in the third segment, Igeres HaTshuva, the presentation, the letter, the epistle of Tshuva of the Alter Rebbe, of the repentance. The Alter Rebbe captures, the, in, um, encapsulates the entire subject of Tshuva, which is, of course, one of the most subject, important subjects, maybe even the most important subject in Teda, for many, many reasons. Just the general idea that Hashem giving a yid a chance to realign himself with this, which is inherently good, divine, holy, and ultimately Hashem himself, Hashem's holy teira, ultimately Hashem himself. Uh, we can never think categorically of a greater gift than that. But also in Shuvah there's depth, to the extent, if you recall, we mentioned this in the past, namely the Altarebbe speaks about it clearly in the seventh chapter of Shari Yichid Vemuno, click away. Um, uh, in in the Makom Shabbat Tshuva Aimdim Tzadikim Gemurim Mein Mechelim Lamid, the place where the Shabbat Tshuva stands, even a righteous, uh, complete tzaddik, a complete righteous yid, does not stand because there is a lot of depth in the Avedas Hashem of Abal Tshuva, in the service of Hashem, precisely of Abal Tshuva. Someone returning to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, a lot of uh, sensation and a lot of depth, as again spoken about uh, in many, many places in in uh, in in, uh, in um, the doctrine of it is underscored even greater uh, than as we spoke again in the past and different times we came up with the idea of tshuva. Tshuva is about aimik, aimik, a lot of depth in that of aimik tshuva, and we can understand. So when you want us to return to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, it's a, ref- it's a result of reflection of one's past. And if it wasn't such a good past, of course, there's a lot of remorse and and um, Rachmanis literally expressing 
<laughs> expressions of mercy and compassion on one's own neshama for that matter because we know what happens when a Yid Rechman Litzlan sins he takes the nefesh, his own nefesh which is part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Chelek Aleka Neshama which is part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Chelek Aleka Mimal Mamosh part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu like Dal Trebri in these chapters starting from Peri Dal it says Chelek Avayami and brings it into areas which are impure and the most nadir level of impurity Shalich Yibzat Meis we've spoken a number of times into the abyss in areas which are really unfortunate and, and, and the person reflects on that and of course it comes with a lot of deep sentiment express, deep sentimental uh, regret and so on <clears throat> um, even that itself you know, famous people we, should, we should have to be very careful also that every 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 Avaid, even the Avaid of Tshuva, has its time, even though there's a concept of Kol Yom of Tshuva, but there's different levels of Tshuva, as we know. So the al Treb in this day, get us a Tshuva, you know, so beautifully, and we always say the al Treb is Tanya, is that perfect manual to Avaid of Hashem, and he get us a Tshuva, is the perfect manual to the Avaid of Tshuva. So, um, to have this all, to understand all this, and to understand how the gateway to the entry of Pedic Zion, wherever you're watching the class, but it's always the advantage of the original web, to go to the original website, Tanya Online, one word, tanyaonline.com, and the, um, the, uh, the, the advantage, as we mentioned, of course, for the newcomers, time and again, there's the uh, scroll bar on a separate, the text on a separate scroll bar, as such, easy to follow, and, but namely, all the previous classes, starting from the Kuti Amorim, all lined up on the left side, and as such, as a click away to uh, to any chapter one wants to tap into, and I say this because even now we just mentioned Pedig Zayin in Igeres Hatshuva. We mentioned, uh, I mean, Pedig Zayin in uh, sorry in the Kuti Amorim. We mentioned the this other uh, the other uh, you know the other references even in this beginning of um, of this class to just uh, just uh, it's easy when you hear a subject because we know that the uh, Vedic in general the Gemara says Ani Mimakam Echad Ashir Mimakam Sheni it's all everything is interconnected and therefore there's always the cross references between one area of Tera and another and so to see this in general and Tanya in particular so. Do you have all, everything lined up? So we mentioned, for example, Kote Amar Mechaperik Zayin, or Perik Havdal. We just mentioned this uh, few words of Perik Beis, of Kote Amar, the end of Havdal, of uh, the, the gravity of sin and so on. It's just a click away. If you want to see a little bit more of the subject and elaboration, this is the advantage of the original website, tanyaonlineoneword.com, to go and tap into other chapters as such. Pedig Zayin, the seventh chapter. What is the, how, the however, the true and straightforward way to tshuva tato, which is hey tato. I'll try to explain again. We're not going to go into this at length. We're going to make sure to work hard not to go into this length because it's going to, you know, take up a lot of our time. That's why it's really a click away. I'll try to just tshuva. What do you have, tshuva? What do you have in the word tshuva? Tosh of hay. Return the hay. Which hay? You know, the, the, because the yid is a chelik havaya ame, part of a kodesh baruch And havaya ame doesn't come from shem melekim. Really, the only expre- in a creation or emanation, if you will, because it's so close to a kodesh baruch Hu. The word emanation from a kodesh uh, is, is more accurate. Coming from a kodesh baruch Hu, shem havaya is only the yid. Even malachim, even angels, like literally keil melekim, they all have a connection to shem melekim. Which is the difference of Shem Likim and Shem Abai is Be'in Arach. There's no comparison. So the Yid is a, not only a Shaykh, it's the build of his, of his Neshama. That was one of the Chidushim of Al-Tareb and Perik Dalit. It's the build of his Neshama that follows the pattern of Yud K Vav K, which is the Shem of Hashem, Chelek Havaye, Chelek Yud K Vav K, the Chelek of Hashem Amei, not only Kim, but Shem Abaye. So the 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 the, the plummet, Nachman <laughs> In sin is expressed in the lower hey of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the hey tato, because as we know there's two k's in the shame of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, in the name of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. There's the inferior and the I mean to say the the second letter is the hey, and then there's the fourth letter which is also the hey, the hey tato, the inferior, the lower hey. That's what grabs the energy of the Shemabaya and Achman Aslan brings it into other areas like the Altarebbe spoke about spoke about Dalit. And then again, these are the chapters that Al-Trebbe deals with this, and the hay has to realign itself with the youth kevav. So this is what tshuva is. Yid does tshuva here, 
And what happens is Tshuva is a, again, an acronym, if you will. It's a, take apart the word Tshuva, rather. It's Toshuv Hey, bringing the Hey back to the Yud Kivov. That again, the perfect alignment with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. <clears throat> and so the Altarebbe spoke about this. We're not going to speak. Literally, you can see it in the previous, in the very previous uh, words of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the Peri Bob, this last chapter. But you have to, to understand, of course, you need to, to learn Dalit Hey and Vav to understand exactly this idea. Even though, of course, we can all understand Tosh Tshuva, Tosh of Hey, bring the Hey back. But what's the spirit behind this message? It's in these previous three chapters, again, to have clarity in this matter. One has to understand and acquaint himself with these three chapters. So, El Tarev begins, what is the, the, the true way, the straightforward way to Tshuva Tato? <clears throat> to the Hey Tato, to bringing back the Hey, back to the Yud Kivov, Toshuv Hey, Himbeis Dvarim Derech Klal. It's generally two ideas. So, the Tarev gave already, you know, through and presented the spirit, what ought to be done down here on this realm. How does the Yid, what does the Yid need to do in order to get the hay back uh, aligned, to be aligned with the Yid Kibov, and he himself to be aligned with HaKadosh Baruch Hu? He spoke about it generally in the previous chapters. Kind of, we know what to do, but Dr. Rebbe says, I'm going to break it down for you. There's a Derecha Emes and Derecha a straightforward way, that how you want the Yid on this plane, his own plane, how does he express his Tshuva in order that there should be the realignment. So he says there's generally two ways. Now he says Derech Klal, means I'm going to tell you two ways, but still Derech Klal, because, you know, as we know, as we, when he does Tshuva, he, it's broken apart even more, because there's Derech Prat in a specific, more uh, detailed manner. Because if you understand the Klal, you can appreciate there are details in, in the Klal. In, this, in these two presentations, there are details, but I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you these two, again, he's articulating, but nonetheless, he does say Derech Klal, these two uh, general ways there are, um, of course, there are details, but I'm going to tell it to you, and again, they're in a general, in, gen- in a in a uh, general way. But I am going to tell you again; these are two explicit, specific expressions within the Avedah of of the Yid. What is it? Aleph, to arouse supreme mercy and compassion from the source of mercy on his neshama of an afshalikis on his soul, his godly soul. Which plummeted from the highest of mountains, which is the life and 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 and, and vitality of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the life and inner energy of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, Blessed be He, all the way to a low valley, which is these are the chambers of impurity. And the other side, which is again a description, as we spoke about it myriads of times in the very beginning of Kutia Marifa, that is, the other side, which is again a terminology for the impure spirit. And the source of this very Nishama, which is truly anchored and sourced in the root of life, in the source of life, which is Shem Hashem, Hashem himself, that a person turns to Hashem and he will have mercy on him. So the first thing is to understand what's going on. And once we understand what's going on, I took part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and I brought it into the lowest and the dear levels of Klip and Sitrach. You can't think of a greater plummet than that. It's a Lushen actually in Zayar, Igre Ram Lebira Mikta, which is again has different, you know, in the broader bracket, and the broader rather connotation, that's a neshama, comes down from the highest of heights, the lowest of valleys. But when you say igra roma, which means a high igra also is considered a roof, a rooftop. A high mountain, it's also has the denotation of a, the, the, uh, of a high mountain. But if you think about the extreme, so you have a regular mountain, for example, and then flatland. It's a plummet, it's a fall, or a someone falls, it could be dangerous. Then you have a very high mountain, even flatland, it's also, it becomes more of a fall, more of a plummet, because it's a higher mountain. And then you have a valley, so then the plummet is even more forceful, and more uh, dangerous, and more would be more catastrophic as such. Because it's such a plummet, not only a regular mountain, but a high mountain. And not to regular land, but to a valley. But then their valleys are different sizes, different 
valleys with different measurements. In other words, there's valleys which are not that deep. But then you say, Bira Amikta, a very deep valley. So that even if a flat line, falls, someone falls into a deep valley, it becomes extremely uh, dangerous. In other words, it becomes extremely, extremely um, uh, uh, a, a difficult, difficult experience, to say the least. Dangerous experience. So, however, when you do the high, the contrast from the highest mountains, highest rooftops, Igira, Igira usually is a room, but in, it's, yeah, generally, generally the, the, the translation is the, the highest mountains, and then you have the lowest valleys, you can't think of any greater extreme, at least in our knowledge in Elam Haz, in this physical world, which of course this is beyond just the measurement of how many hundreds of hundreds of feet from one to the other, thousands of feet from one to the other, the highest amounts or the lowest of valleys, but again, on a spiritual plane, it's beyond that. That was just, the, the Lashon of Zayah is just to, to, to and give us, to, 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 to identify, the, the, to um, relate to us something that we can identify, the highest of mountain and the lowest of valleys. We can't give to any, in Elam Haz, in this physical world, to the farthest, extre- um, to far extremes, diametrically distant extremes, and this is what transpires when a person sins. It's neshama, which is a part of a Baruch, which is categorically in the highest levels because there's nothing greater and higher than a Baruch, and within a Baruch itself, the highest, the deepest level, the core of a Baruch, which is of course the difference of Shem Abai and Shem Alikim. Shem Alikim is a holy name; it's one of the seven names which are not meant to be erased. But it's a different phenomenon, as we explain. It's Bein Arich. There's no, there's no comparison. Bein Arich means to say there is no comparison at all between the two. Shema Bai is the Shema Mfeir, Shema Atzim, that's where the Eid comes from. So it's in the highest levels by definition, it's the highest levels within Elokus. That's what the Neshama is all about. When a person sins, he takes that Neshama and brings it all the way into the lowest levels. Bira uh, Mikta, in other words, the lowest and the most nadir um, levels of impurity, which is again not only a valley but a deep valley, a very low and deep, deep valley, steep valley, and, and, and steep meaning to say a very deep valley um, without any. The, the plummet is just a, a, a um, an immediate plummet. That's what happens when a person sins. It's like a steep valley, but it it, 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 it it's extremely goes all the way amikta. It's, it's deep meaning to say it it doesn't can't go lower. And that's what the area of Rahman al of sin is all about. So the Neshama, which is a part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rahman al the moment it sins, it takes this Neshama from the highest levels and it falls into the Bira Mikta. And he sins in action, sins in speech, in thought, in vision, in audio. The moment he sins, this is what happens. If he had the, see behind the screen, taking... So the Lashon of the Al and here the Al Tareb says it as well, intimates this idea that Shpos Shem Avayi Baruch Hu, taking the head of the king and putting it into the abyss, putting it into the Lashon of the Al Tareb in the twenty fourth chapter. We mentioned a few times in the past, the end of the twenty fourth chapter. You could see the Lashon of the Al Tareb, twenty fourth chapter of the Kuti Amorim. That is the first segment. You could see it. It's lined up. It's a click away. The Reish Shalbelo, the head of the king, is putting it into the uh, a container of decay. Again, the Lashon of the Al Tareb. Here, spiritually, it's far more grave than that. But this is we can understand the 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, gravity of the Aveda. And looking at the neshama, what a rachmanus it is on the neshama. The chelik of the kamimal mamash is right now in is pulled into the. Into the area of the impure, the most nadir areas of impurity. So the first thing is one has to to try to arouse the supreme mercy of a Baruch Hu will come from the, the source of mercy. What does it mean, the source of mercy? This Al Tareba also, as a cross reference, it would be uh, to understand, to appreciate this, and understand this in Pedic Mem Hay, the fifty. 55th, 55th chapter of Lukuti Amorim, again, the first segment of Lukuti Amorim, also to click away, the short painting, but to appreciate these words over here, actually, uh, quite a few of these words are literally tantamount to those, uh, to that, to, to the uh, verbiage of that chapter, clearly, 
the wordage of that chapter is a lot. I see over here in the, the, the subsequent words. So to have clarity on this, it's worthwhile to go there and to study that chapter um, to understand what the Altar is saying over here because there's a chmonis of the way it's set up in Seder Ishtalshals. In the orderly evolution of... Uh, of Seder uh, Ishtalshalus, which is starting from Elam Matzilus. There's the different meters. We spoke about this many times. Of course, we're not going to elaborate on this. There's the ten spheres, the orderly uh, evolvement <clears throat> from the, on high to below. Goes, it's usually every Elam, there's ten spheres, the Chochma, Bina, Das, uh, which correspond to the cognitive faculties of the Chochma, Bina's wisdom, understanding, and knowledge over here. Now, there's a reason why the buildup of the human being is which Adam Adam Mela Elian equated to the way things are on, are on high with his three cognitive faculties is because there is the every Eilam, the structure of the Eilam starts with Chacham Bin Adas, and then there's the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is Chesed, Vodo, Tiferes, Netzach. So again, the reason why it is by a person who have down here Lamata is because it's on high. Um, so there's an Eilam starting from Eilam Atzil, there's the Chesed, the Vodo, Tiferes, Netzach, Hayyisei, Malchus, which are the seven Midas, the attributes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the third one would be Rachmanus, so it's kindness, severity, which is discipline, and, and then Rachmanus. And we can understand there's some that they wish to express as chesed, and sometimes there's Rachmanus, sometimes there's Gvura, even though there's Gvura, there's different levels of Gvura, the Gvura in the context of discipline, sometimes Gvura is Shaman, we're not going to go into it now. Every, every Midah has its expression on high, similar to the way it's below. And as we said, the, way, the reason why it's below, because it's on high, but what we could relate to is someone's a kind, and then there's someone who is... Uh, is acting or expressing his severity, but not just, of course, we're not talking about s- levels of severity just for the sake of severity. There's a concept of discipline when a person holds back the overt kindness, overt expression of kindness. And then you have the Rachmanus, which is compassion. Compassion is a different idea. Total different idea. It's not kindness. It's beyond kindness. It's identifying the issue. Nonetheless, having Rachmanus on it. Not just like, kindness is about the person who is I, it's expressing kind of, his attribute of kindness, the beautiful word of the Rebbe Hashab, um, and his famous um, discourse called Ayn Bez, which is uh, one of the famous Maimorim. Uh, um, in other words, it's not just a mimer, it's a mimer of a few years, which it began in the year Tafresh Ayn Bez, that's why it's called Ayn Bez, went on for a few years, the Hemshach, it's a sequence of Maimorim, a beautiful man, a beautiful, uh, beautiful vort he has in one of the uh, the new princes in the third Sefer, pretty much in the center of the new Sefer. I think it's a mimer of Eilu Mishpatim, and he says, Racham says it beautifully, he says, Ches is kind of a default mido. And there's a person who's kind. Not everybody's kind, but a person is uh, naturally kind. So it's just, he opens up the window of kindness. He oh, he expresses, he is um, expressing himself with kindness. In other words, he's expressing his kindness. He opens up that window and it's it's, flow, it's flowing kindness. It's kind of about him. Just opening it up, opening the window of kindness. And it's like it says by Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu says, he's like, it's just a window of giving and giving without discerning, without identifying, without capturing the situation. And so he says, but even the, the contrast of Chesed and Rachmin is where it's, a, it, uh, it, it's important, in other words, to point out, because it seems to be the same, kindness or mercy, compassion, just giving it. No, the, the Rebbe Shab says, no, Chesed is about a person opening the window of his own Chesed, so there's flowing Chesed, without discerning, without identifying, without articulating in one's mind, what's really going on. Rachman, as he says, is based on Das, connects it there with the Sviris, Dati, whatever, not, not to go into it now, that because, which is Tiferes, Rachman is, is when you capture the situation, and you're able to see the full picture of what's going on with the other party, or the other city, or the, the other party, or the other parties, or the, this family, that, that, that uh, image which you see, or that whole scenario, if it's a broader scenario, society, whatever it is, you capture it deeply and extremely new, in, in, nuancedly. And then that arouses, Rachmanis comes in thereafter. When you capture the matter, not only capture it with your Chachman Bina, but then the Das, that, that, that inner sensational clarity with the matter that arouses your Rachmanis to deal with the matter, you're, you're compassionate to deal with the matter. I saw there's there's a lot of mercy needed over here. 
And if we can take that and just relate it to this Pedic, the Altenim says, it's not just, okay, you know, I'm no, look what's really going on. Capture the idea. It's not just the opening a window of kindness or compassion, you know, to overflow a difficult situation. No, capture the idea. What happened over here? One sin, especially... You're talking about the, <clears throat> somebody. Uh, every sin is Rachman Islam, taking the Rishish al Melech, the head of the king, and bringing it down. The Kodesh Baruch Hu himself, the sanctity of the divinity of the Neshama, which is a part of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And through that action or speech or thought, <laughs> and again, we say thought is, of course, the package of vision and audio, uh, in, in, in bringing it down at that moment into the lowest levels of Klip and Sitrachro. So one thinks about it deeply. One has to arouse Rahmanas of a It's such it automatically arouses a, a certain level of compassion. What a Rahmanas on the person's in Shama. And if you will, by extension, Rahmanas and Akhajbarhu, which invested in the Shama. He put his core essence in the Shama and the Yid by choice took the Abish there and put him into the area of Shal Kippa Satmayas. And therefore the Al Tareb says even the Rahmanas of Sayyid Ishtal this is also not enough. Because in the end of the day, the Mideis, again, we can see it in another place, in another place. we spoke about it many, many times, that even the, the Midas of Atsilis, even though they house and host the Ain Sof, the, the Atsilis, the energy of Atsilis, is in, has an infinite energy because it ho- houses the Ain Sof of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore there's a lot of uh, the Chesed of HaKadosh Atsilis is Bleakvul, and the Chesed of Gvur, and Rachmin, because again, there's Every midah has a, the, an ain soft energy, nonetheless, it's still a midah. We spoke about this actually in, in, in that very chapter, made Mem Hei in Lukuti Amarim, the 45th chapter in Lukuti Amarim, that there is the, the, the Svidas on their own, even though the entire Atsilas houses the ain soft as such, every midah carries that ain soft energy, nonetheless. It's a, it's a midah, it's called midah Yisav Atsilas. The midah, by definition, is called a measurement. Midas are called measurements. Of course, midas means attributes, but the word mida means a measurement. And, it, and, and, and therefore, together with the ains of energy in every single mida, the fact is that it's part of Eilam Atzilus. And we explain many, many times, Eilam, as the Gemara says in Gemara Edevin, that Eilam is Melashen Helam Vehester. That it covers up on the, it, it, on the, on the, energy of, of, of the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's Lashon Eilam. Eilam, again, conce- it was about concealment. Concealing what? Concealing the purity of the Ein Sof. So if you talk about Eilam Atzilus, yes, of course, it's a, Eilam Atzilus is a number of places. Atzilus also has the connotation, has a number of meanings, <coughs> separation, but it's also Etzle, the Samuchle. Etzle, Atzilus, is close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And again, it, 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 it is a world, we spoke about it so many times because of the Chachma Atzilus, not to go into it now, but it's a world which houses the Ein Sof, and therefore every Mida of Atzilus, of course, carries the energy of Ein Sof, but unless it's still part of the Eilam, the world of Atzilus. So the spheres of Atzilus, there's some Mida dimension, some measurement dimension. It doesn't, it's not truly mm, on core essential levels of that very Mida. It's not truly Ein Sof, it's a Mida which carries the energy of Ein Sof because it's part of the structure of Eilam Atzilus. Even though Atzilus itself is Etzli the Samachlay, so close to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, so be, so as such, even the Rachmanus, the Mida of Rachmanus of Atzilus, despite it has a certain Ein Sofness, if you will, nonetheless is still a Mida of Rachmanus, and therefore that does not yet express the entire Rachmanus, the entire mercy pity, which really mm, exists towards this Neshama which sinned, and therefore the El Trebe says it's not enough. When you have to arouse the Mikhail Harachmi, source of Rahmanis, the way it's higher than the whole world of Atsilus, which is known to be the source of the Rahmanis, the way it's in Keser, which is again truly the expression of the Ain Safa within Keser, the deeper level in Keser, which is known to be Atik. Ultimately, you'd give me the Sarachmi, which comes from Atik, the 13 attributes of mercy, which are known to be. The Lifnei Hashem, even higher than the structure of Shemavaya, which is associated with Elam Atzilus, which I'll, we spoke about as many times, Al-Tarim has in Perik Dalet. The Yud is the Chochma, the He is the Bina, the Bab is the Midas, and the He is the Malchus. It's Lifnei Hashem, it's higher and it's deeper, and it's really the true expression of the 
<coughs> the the Ein Sof, the way it comes through Rachamim mercy, because one would suggest if it's Rachamim, so where's the Ein Sof? No, the Rachamim itself is part of the Pshitas of Akuda, has the Pshitas, which means the 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 uh, purity and the infinite infinity of the Ein Sof within every single Midah, in the Midas, the way they are in Kesson, namely in Atik. But again, when they're there, that you can't even call them by definition of Midah, because again, this is beyond Eil Matzils, and that's the source of Rachmin. So the person ought to arouse the, the, the Rachmanus of his known as Neshama, not only from the Rachmin Mevatzilos, which are as a Midas Rachmin, yes, it carries a certain bleak bull in infinity, because it, it, generally the Eil Matzilos is close to Akkadosh Baruch, houses the Ein Sof. <clears throat> Nonetheless, it's the Lamida that it's not enough to arouse uh, the, the Rachmanis is in, insufficient, so to say, in, 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 in to, to, the, to focus or to reflect and to have that expression of compassion on the Neshama, which Rachmanis and sin in their, sin in their four persons to arouse even deeper than that. The, the, the Rachmanis, the compassion of the Neshama, mim keir harachamim, from the source of of Rahmanus, which is given with the Rahmim, because the regular Rahmanus is not enough. And we could relate to that. There's certain scenarios which okay, it's Rahmanus and you 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 act based on the Rahmanus on that uh, pity, on that mercy, on that compassion. And you extend yourself one one way or another. But when it comes to certain areas and certain scenarios you see and you say, Whoa, that touches much deeper uh, level of Rahmanus. A, a, a level which is not usually tapped into. And right away you would arouse that inner Rachmanus because you see a scenario which is beyond the norm. As we, as human beings, we sometimes encounter or we hear a story and there's like, there's no container. And there's no container even for Rachmanus, which Rachmanus by definition is some expression of the inner sensitive strands of the Neshama, but that's not enough. We go even deeper because well, the scenario which we just saw with our own eyes or we heard about is so catastrophic that it arouses the deepest levels of Rahmanus, soul type of Rahmanus, beyond the norm. And the Alter Rebbe says it over here, if we just understood what happens. Rahman and Islam, when a person does any sin, particularly the grave ones, the ones Alter Rebbe is referring to over here in this Gibbs HaKchuba, we've spoken many times, but it, 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 it really virtual it, it, it virtually refers to every single every single sin but you cause by definition this is what a sin is all about it rips away that alignment the Shem Hashem from the, the hay from Shem Hashem again everything which was spoken about in the previous chapters but namely there is according to Taylor the Chamur is the grave sins and, and of course Al Tarabit and you get us a show which we spoke many times has that Speaks about that the, that that's the, the is in a thread throughout the entire years of Shuba, about the the, the sin that the Rebbe alludes to a few times. We spoke about it in the past. So the, when a yid rechmanuslan sins, what happens is it's a, a, a scenario which is beyond catastrophic. Taking a chelil kamimal, part of a kodesh baruch, which that's where the neshama comes from, and ripping it away from its source and bringing it where not to just a, just a lower level of okay, we'll, we'll just realign no the bira mikta to a lowest level of the lowest valley which is shows you that maze what a great rahmanus that is on the neshama and therefore the regular and, and which is beyond the regular rahmanus that's what al says the the, the source of rahmanus the Rahmanus, which is higher than the say that Ishtash was the orderly evolution of 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 uh, and and chain of the way Hakadosh Baruch Hu created his elements. In other words, in every element being the ten spheres, which be the say that Ishtash was. <clears throat> beyond that, much beyond that. From the source of Rahmanus. And to the arouse to arouse from the source of the Rahmanas was the orderly involvement, higher than the orderly involvement, higher than the Sadish Dalshas, beyond Sadish Dals. You give me the Sarachami. Uh, which plummeted from the highest of mountains, which is Hashem, the life of a Kushbarku, to the lowest of valleys, which are the chambers. Of impurity in chambers of Sitra Achim. 
and again on its source, and the Shem itself is a part of a Baruch Hu, but it's a part of a Kodesh Baruch Chelik Abaya, Mamamosh. But you talk Mamamosh, the core of a Kodesh Baruch, the Shem Abaya itself, Hashem Himself, Hashem's holy name, Hashem Himself, Hashem Etzem, Hashem Mafedish. That is what was it was compromised. That the tshuva turns to the, 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 the return to Kodesh Baruch, the tshuva to Kodesh Baruch has to be associated with Rachmanus. So the literal meaning of Yosher, always, it's always important to translate a pasuk. We try to do so before we uh, introduce what Dal Tereb is saying to translate the verse as it is. So the Yosher al Hashem, the Yid turns to Kodesh Baruch Hu, Yirachamei and Hashem is Rachmanus on the Shem. But Dal Tereb says Yosher al Rachmanus has to have a connection to Yirachamei. How could you do tshuva if you don't understand what really happened? If you do understand, whoa, does that arouse instantaneously? And it's meant to, and if you understand, you capture. And you capture what really, what really happened over here through that sin. It arouses the deepest levels of mercy and compassion over your nisham, which is, again, a crucial part of Egypt's doing tshuva. Pirish rachmi baruchu to arouse compassion and mercy onto the flow and extension of energy of, sh- of the Shem Abaye, blessed be he, the name of Havaye, the Yud Kibavki, blessed be he, which evolved and fell into the chambers of the impurity of Sitra Achra, that is, the other side. Again, mentioned many times, the other side is a definition uh, of the spirit of impurity, hatmeim, which are impure, lachyesom, aydeimaisa, enish v'tachbaleisa, to give them life, to give them energy, to vitalize them, as we spoke about in the past, and we're not going to repeat this, because we, we, we explained this in, in detail, we took the time in the previous chapter, vav, we, we build and aggrandize their, their empire, lachyesom, we give them life, taking something that belongs to the, uh, to, to Kedusha, and ripping it away is one thing, but not only that, when it goes into the forces, and it extends over to the forces of Klippa and Sitrachra, the impure forces, it gives them life, it sustains them, and builds their empire. Again, we spoke about this in Pirik Bob, you can imagine the Rahman is a place which is so abhorrent to HaKadosh Baruch it's loathed by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he had sins, he's pulling that they, 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 they explain that like the conveyor belt, he's pulling the energy from Shemabaya, and it's not only you know, compromising the alignment of the K Tata, the He with the Yud Kevav, and as such as Neshama, and all about him, that symmetry with the on high, with his source, with Shemabai, but more so, he's pulling it into the Klip and Sitrachar. And what he's doing it is not just, okay, it's away from Kedusha, it's into that. I mean, no, you're building more and more of the empire of Klip and Sitrachar. Explain this also in the broader sense, the idea of Golos, the, the, the domination nations had over Am Yisrael. How does that ever happen? Yidabni Bechei Yisrael is part of HaKadosh Baruch is the, is the, is the most precious, what is most precious to HaKadosh Baruch is the Yid. And it comes from the deepest levels of HaKadosh Baruch It's called the sun. The Dalt Rebbe has in the second chapter, he explains a few times over Ta- in Tanya, but the, famously the second chapter, the Dalt Rebbe begins, Nefesh Hashem is Yisrael, Chelik HaLikam Mal Mamash, and he brings Bni Bechei Yisrael, not only his son, as the son is the most... Is so dear to a father. Pcheiri, the firstborn, is nothing more precious to a Kodesh Baruch than the Yid. And most, in all levels, and here we're talking about the deepest levels, is a part of a Kodesh Baruch. How is it that it could be the like, phenomenon of other nations? Again, in the broader, broader picture, in the broader bracket of nations having dominance of Bnei Bcheiri. So it's all because Bnei Chato Einu Galin Me'artzeinu. We built up their empire. But again, we're talking about the individual Yid, microcosmically, of the Yid, the person sins. The Achmanis is not because I pulled only, but I pulled away the hay, the energy of the hay, and then compromised that alignment and that connection and so on, as we spoke about it. But more so, I brought it into the abyss, into the spirit of Tumma and Klippa and Sitar Acha, but Lachyesom. I'm giving them life and giving them energy and I'm giving them their vitality, building their empire, what Rahmanis, which comes through Maisa Enej with Tahbulaisa, which comes through the actions of man and his conspiracies, but also Tahbulaisa is you know, getting away from the the words of Taita, where Taita says, Don't speak, don't do, don't think, don't look, don't hear, and so on. And the person conspires, so to say, to in his uh, inappropriate in, 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 in actions. Uh, the actions, uh, speech, and thoughts, and so on. 
or Machshavais of Arois in his evil, inappropriate thoughts, which he entertains his mind with. This which Hashem says not to entertain one's mind with. Commissioner Kosel, like it says, Melech Osur Barahotim. And there's a number of explanations to these words, but one of them is barahatim, the flow, the flow. It's like you drop, for example, a jewel. It drops, you throw it into water, it drops into water. Of course, it's a difficulty to take, you feel it lost, it's an anxiety, and you know, you're anxious to take it out. But what if it's just there's a flow? Water is an example. You drop the beautiful jewel worth $10 million in the flow, and then it goes along and blunge it plunders in that flow of water and go find it and go take it and it, the, 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 the mess is much greater and it says the king is incarcerated in the flow it's like a, a, a trough for example when there's a flow of water but he in the flow of the ongoing um, uh, ongoing stream so to say of the mayach of the mind the chulu etc and what is, again, there's a number of explanations of that, but one of the explanations is because the mind is always in progress. Always, always. The mind, thought, it's always on a move. It's always on the go. As we know it, actions a person could, could stop doing and start doing. Comes a speech, like it says, a person can be silent. in the mind, especially when associated with, 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 with thought, a number of places, different examples, you say meichin usually. And then it's the cognitive faculties, the function of the cognitive faculties. That's really categorically meichin, but it's always together with thoughts, because the machshav is a levusha garment for the meichin, not to go into it now. That's always flowing, and it's flowing, and it's flowing. So, but where is it going? It's going in the direction, in a direction aligned with a lukus, with a kajibaruch, or chas v'shol, and the opposite. And if it's the opposite, the neshama, is right there. And it's going along, it's getting lost in that flow, and taking the energy, and where is it taking it to? To the diamond and taking it to the sewer, if you will. And again, he used the Lushan because Al-Tanab himself used the Lushan. The end of, we quoted this before, 24th chapter in Lakuti Amar. So the Melech, the king himself, is also is incarcerated in that flow of the Mayach, Rahman al Take a king, take him from his palace, and just throw him into the in places where. And you're talking about a real, you know, not a king. Uh, of course, you're talking about a king, a proper king, with all the ro- ro- reality, ro- ro- the um, royal, uh, royal uh, uh, royalty. Excuse me, in his, in his royalty and regality, and, and 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 just put him in a place which is me- a mess. But then put him in a place which is, you know, down the stream to the sewage. The, the, the king is incarcerated because he's there and it's moving along in that area, which is down to the sewage. To the sewer system, meaning, and, and therefore it's, it's also, he's, he's incarcerated. That's what happens with him. Because here, it's hard to understand, you know, with the virtue of a physical king, because, you know, because, you know, the... The fact that it's, it's mortal and he's uh, and there's no perfection in the human being, but but there is concept that we could we don't have it today so much in the West, of course, and everything is based on democracy, let's say. So, but the, the, in the in the yesterday years, the king, you know, if there's something which is especially when we talk about Melech Israel, but the kingship is something which is you know there's that's we have to make even a bracha on a king. It's a certain status of a human being and again we're not talking about a tyrant or anything we're talking about a proper king it's this is this is special and we can appreciate when there is a king which is incarcerated in, in and and has to deal with this these matters we can we think the Rahmanas is so great even in a physically king and then not only in a place of stum you know uh, in a place which we don't find the king you know, being there and him being there is definitely something. It's, it's not his place, but beyond that, when it's something which is an impure flow of unclean, dirty water, sewage water, we can realize this is something which is which is you can't think of two extremes. But of course, we can appreciate him so much deeper. We talk him the Melech Malcha, Malcha Malcha, 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 what is the mind mode on? Is it a mode which is thinking illocals, intellectualizing illocals, 
thinking matters of Teiro and Tfilo and helping another person. And in the Tzav HaShoah, we're talking about presently today, extending oneself to another year, living a life of extension to another year. That's the flow, and how can I help, and how can I, and again, very, it, it, it expands itself in so many different areas, because when one has to want to do something in an organized manner, in a professional manner, so of course there's thoughts also, how do I do this, and how do I build my building, and how do I build a shul, and how do I, and they, and they design the art in Kaidish, and, and pay the bills, and pay the, pay the people who are giving shirim, of course there's so much, but this is all in a healthy flow of a healthy mind, focusing on healthy matters. Because they're all associated with the divine one way or another. And of course, they're that same individual. So he, it's it direct, his thoughts and his focus is on, in, in, on matters of Taita, or thinks Taita, and he thinks about a Lukul, of a Baruch, and he davens. Of course, his whole, um, his whole experience is in the cocoon of a Lukus. But again, it's 24 hours learning Taita, is Tfilah, is Kalma Sechel, Shem Shemayim, Kol If that's the flow, so that's the, that's, that's the king's palace, that's the domain of a Baruch, that's where he feels comfortable. It's not only he's not incarcerated. Oh, you're 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 making the perfect abode, your perfect domicile for him, and he's so happy. And he's so he just feels comfortable. Dira, this is his dira. Hashem had a desire in your lust to have a dwelling place down here in this physical world. However, Rachman Slan that he hitim mecha the flows in other areas. Rachman Slan. It's not that the person is not a from me. Of course, he's not a from me. You know, truth may be said, if a person is not careful, it doesn't matter what, what he looks like and what he represents, which community he identifies with, or, or how he even identifies himself. You know, the Eibishter, it's your personal portfolio with HaKadosh Baruch. And it ought to be clean. In action, speech, and name, even thought. What you look at and what you hear. what you If it's going, it's a flow in a, in, in, in a negative not only negative direction, but the, the substance of what you're involved with is this one well clean, to say the least. It's taking the king himself and putting him into that flow of, 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 of Rahman and Islam. You can't think of a greater incarceration of a melech in general, in particular, it comes melech, 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 And that's the word of Golos, that's what he said, that's the level of Golos HaShechina. That's the exile of the Shechina. Shechina is in Golos. In Pnei Chato, Einu Goli, the reason why there's a yid is in Golis individually or macrocosmically, the entire Am Yisrael, only because Chata'im, or the macro picture, all entire Am Yisrael, is Chata'im, because we put the Eivishter in, we establish, we aggrandize this Golis, and we put take the Eivishter and put him into the Golis. He said, not to repeat, that's so what he says, you know, to get this idea of this Golis Hashchina, in the very last class or two classes of the previous chapter, Perik Vav, which is really the last two classes, Maybe even the last class itself, which we elaborated. This is the Golos but we get the idea over here. The Shechina is in Golos. Shechina is in incarceration. Divine presence. And that's an important and dimension in the process of the doing Shuvah. To arouse the Rechmanus, to capture what happened through his sin. Through the individual sin. And to arouse the deepest levels of Rahman because it, it 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 should be it's such a it's such a difficult such a difficult experience. The regular Rahmanas also is insufficient. It, it by by nature one captures what really happens and what really <clears throat> really happened when the person sinned. Of course it arouses the deepest levels, the Mikhaira Rahman, the source of Rahman, as we just mentioned. Understanding what transpired from one sin causes the goal of Sashin. And that is again crucial and essential in the process of tshuva. As the Altarebbe begins, based the body means, of course, holding still by the first. The proper time is by tikkun chatzais, which is again a service, which is, you know, not every, you know, I'm just gonna. Tikkun chatzais, just like very briefly, it's one of the prayers which. One says from a yid, people especially are chassidim and anshim, and people are on a level. Even though it doesn't say anywhere, there's no limitations. It's a certain service a person gets up mid the middle of the night, and there's a whole. Use. It's actually printed in the sedurim. Tehillas Hashem, of course, it's printed because this is a whole arousal, and it's again, it's 
particularly associated with the midnight, with the, the, uh, the, that time, it reflects a time on high, I'm not going to go into it right now, it's not just, okay, that's a time which I'm done with all my work, let me just, no, it's a, it's, there's a certain intrinsic v- v- value and virtue to that very time of midnight, where you would get up and you'd sit on the floor, decrying the Golas HaShechina, the exile of the Shechina, and there's a lot, <clears throat> which is even in that prayer it spoke about, and it's, and, and it's explained before the prayer itself, and in the prayer, the whole prayer is all about the 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 uh, experience of the arousal of the Rachmanis on the Shechina, the way it's associated with the Yid as a Chelik of Kamimal, but also as such, or consequently in the Golas HaShechina in general. And, and it's, uh, it's like someone you know dealing with an issue, but this is something dealing with the issue, which is a cause to all the other issues which exist in Golos, or are part of an established Golos in its many layers and branches, the way the Golos is expressed, it all comes from one area, that the Shechina, the dominating force, which was meant to be in perfect alignment, the hey with the Yud Kivov, and as such, down to the individual Yid, and collectively to all of Yisrael, which would never express itself in all these expressions of Golos, because there's that perfect symmetry with the below, the Yid individually, or collectively, but when there is the Golos Hashchino, everything falls apart because we can only understand. And it establishes an actual Golos, but on a different plan than the Golos, physically and spiritually. It's, 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 a, it's a catastrophic image, but that comes from the result. The source of it is the Golos Hashchino, and this is the crying, this is the whole, um, the whole, um, Prayer of Tikkun Chatzos, it's just simply a person sits down and it's like a Tisha B'Av idea, if you think about it. It says they put ashes on their head and they decry the Kolos HaShchino. And again, just look at the prayer itself, what it's written about it and, and the actual verses which we recite. And there's a Lushen, again, there's the Aveda after a person concludes with Tikkun Chatzos. The optimal way is to take that energy, which again, one assembled within his own soul, so to say, and, and uh, so the soul experience in this prayer and this whole experience of taking chatzos and learn through the night, learn teda through the night and so on. Tashmeni sos of the simcha subsequent to the um, lamentation in this in this prayer. This is taking chatzos. This is what taking chatzos is over here. I'm not going to go into it. The, we, the who says it and when is it says. Al Tareb himself says someone can't do it every night. You should do it Thursday night. But there are no rules. One can do it every night. They once had a mashpia one side, and I asked him, like, how come we don't know, you know, how come we don't, it's in the printed in the Siddur, why isn't it part of the, you know, we say, we dab and we say, Kishim Shalamit every night, we don't skip a night, why is this something which eh, we don't repeat every single night? Apparently it's a prayer which gives perspective to Yid individually and collectively to society, and so on. He says, he answered brilliantly, he says, you think everyone who does Tinkin they put out a sign in front door, I do Tinkin Chatzos? And then you go through the signs and say, well, how can we not all of us do it? He said, there's so many people who do Tikkun Chatzos. They don't, and, and don't think, in other words, if the Altar never printed it, and, and not only that, this is something which is part of the Abayi Hashem one way or another, and Altar Rebbe, even though the Altar Rebbe himself says, one can't do it every night, Thursday night is a conducive night, but the idea to say, oh, we don't do that, no, it's not true, was his message, and of course it's not true, because it is a, um, it's a very unique and special prayer, for that matter, which gives perspective to the Yid, and, 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 and it gives a very broad, bracketed perspective in his own personal Nabayi Hashem, as we can only understand and glean from these very words, and of course, to the entire picture of Am Yisrael here in, 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 um, in rather, in Golis, and waiting, awaiting redemption, and understanding where redemption comes. Redemption comes from when we redeem our own Chil to the Kamimal Mamash, our own soul from uh, the in, 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 in the, the misunfortunate experiences of sin again and the consequences of what happens to one person. Like everything we learned over here, and we say over here, and we regurgitate over here time and again. It's the Golis Shechina, the Golis Shechina, we redeem the Shechina, so then there's redemption. And again, it gives so much perspective not only to the Yitz Avaida individually, but collectively. Of course, to the grander picture that is, and therefore it is an important prayer. Salatulam says this whole idea is so perfectly aligned with the message of Tikkun Chatzos, and therefore it's a conducive time to Tikkun Chatzos, like it says in Seder Baharus Shina in Beis, in that uh, in in in, uh, in as it's spoken there about 
the conduciveness of Tikkun Chatzos to this idea of the arousal of Rachmanus, especially in Keir HaRachim. So the Altarebbe, we'll stop over here, the Altarebbe still speaks about this first idea, uh, which we we'll look forward to continuing to learn about in the next class, Bezus Hashem, and then he begins later, Bezus the second, which is also crucial of the derech ha'em is vayashal b'chines tshuva tata hei tata to the true and straightforward way to this level of tshuva returning the hay to the yud kibov. Have a meaningful week and, and a week of tshuva, if you will. Kol yama b'tshuva. Have a wonderful night.